Hello all and welcome to the 2023 Southeast Collaborative Online Conference. I'm Laurie Thompson and I'll be your host for this session, which is entitled Overcoming the Email Avalanche, one of the ones I've been waiting for. This event is sponsored through funding from the Library Services and Technology Act through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Please feel free to ask questions or make comments in the chat or interact with any of the other attendees and the speaker within the Whova app during the presentation. And now I'd like to introduce Doug Crane, the director of the Palm Beach County Library System, which he just told me is one of the big six in Florida. That's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us today. We really appreciate your time and effort to put this together. Well, happy to be here. It's all yours. Okay, thank you. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Overcoming the Email Avalanche, Three Steps to Email Efficiency. So before I begin, let me go ahead and just ask you all to answer these questions and you can do it through the Whova app or just on your own, wherever you're sitting. So first of all, I'd like you to just take a moment to self-assess. What level of organization are you? Are you a one, someone who struggles mightily with organization and uh, you're just you know, quite astonished that you actually were able to get to work today? Or are you somewhere like a three, consider yourself average? Or a five, someone who's super organized, who's only just trying to find that last little tip or trick to put them over the top. All right. Next question I have for everyone. What is the number of emails that you currently have in your work inbox, read or unread? Is it empty? Zero? Absolutely nothing in there? Is it less than 10? Is it from 10 to 50? 51 to 100? 100 to 200? Is it under 1,000? More than 1,000? More than 5,000? More than 10,000? How many do you have there? Because that's going to be key to helping you get to clear them out. And finally, when was the last time you actually emptied your inbox? Was it today? Yesterday? Last week, last month, <laughs> last year, or perhaps never. <clears throat> Where are you right now? Where do you lie on that spectrum? Because no matter where you are, no matter how deep you think you are in this email avalanche, it is possible to dig yourself out of it and get back in control of email. Now, I just want you to take a moment to consider why you're here. What is it you would like to get out of this session? What would you like to learn? It's usually very helpful when you take a training to consider what your goal is for taking the training. What do you want to get out of it? What do you want to learn? What do you want to take away? What do you want to end up practicing? So take a few moments and it's always good to write it down somewhere. Just record it. You can just write on a sheet of paper, share it in the Whova app, go ahead and just Give yourself an electronic note, whatever. What is your intention for being here? Since there are certainly other things you could be doing with your time. The more focused you are on the goal, the more likely you are to identify things that will help you achieve that goal. Now, who am I and why am I qualified to even teach this class? Well, as I've shared, my name is Doug Crane. I'm the director for the Palm Beach County Library System down here in beautiful Southeast Florida. And I'll tell you right now about a decade ago, I was struggling with organizations, struggling to get my stuff in control. <laughs> but then I came across a system that is actually a worldwide standard for getting email, getting your work all under control. And I applied that. And for the past 10 years, I've been running on inbox zero. That is an empty inbox every day. And not only that, I've been teaching other people how to tech, get their work under control for over the past 10 years, doing webinars like this, in-person sessions, attending at conferences, all over the place. And I'll tell you how to find out more about me and where I'm teaching next at the end of the seminar. So let's start first with the unique challenge of handling email. Now there's an organization called DMR and they've done many different studies. Unfortunately, the only one that's still publicly accessible that I can find 
without paying for something is their 2019 study. But still, that's not so long ago that it can't give us some insight into how many messages the average worker gets a day. Now, what do you think it is? Do you think it's less than 20, less than 40, less than 60, less than 80? Well, what they found was the average person got 121 business emails a day. <laughs> now, some of you might be thinking, oh, if I only got that many, I'd be, be able to get things under control. But still, that is a lot, and I pretty much can guarantee that number has gone up in the last few years. So I'm still looking for a better stat, but that's what I'm working with right now. And as you can tell, that's quite a lot. Now, how can you get to zero? Well, <laughs> some people have gone to extremes, in fact, declaring email ba bankruptcy. It's actually very simple to get to inbox zero. Just open up your, your, in, your email. Do control A to highlight all your messages and then hit delete, done. You're at inbox zero, congratulations. Any questions? <laughs> well, obviously this is a pretty extreme way to approach email. Uh, in fact, of course, if you do this technique, you might be getting rid of a lot of things that might be useful to you or important. So there's gotta be a better way than declaring email bankruptcy. And I'm gonna share that way right now. In fact, it can be summarized down to about three steps. The first is to change your relationship to your inbox, to understand that it is for in only, that is new material only. The second thing is to empty it regularly. Don't let it pile up. And the third thing is in order to do the first two, you need to store your messages in functional folders. These are different from your archives in order to keep awareness of what each type of message is and what it means to you. I'll be breaking that down as we go through the seminar today. So as a librarian, of course, I am contractually obligated to give you a book recommendation. So today I'm sharing with you the book that changed my work life here. And it's called Getting Things Done by David Allen. Now, I'd be curious to know if any of you have encountered this before. Even though it's a worldwide known bestseller, and has been around for over 20 years, I'm still very surprised to find the number of people who have not encountered it yet. But if you have not, consider this today your lucky day. This is the day you came across GTD, getting things done, and the day that your life, at least your work life, if you're fortunate like me, will change for the better. Now, who is this David Allen guy, and why is he so important? Well, he was a management consultant working with Fortune 500 companies, and he discovered a problem encountered with all these executives he was working with, was that even though they were tasked with big, broad strategic planning and goal setting and visioning, a lot of their day-to-day -day was bogging them down. They were having trouble you know, getting their workflow under control and getting their email under control, and that was sabotaging their ability to do the higher level things they were hired to do. So he came up with a series of best practices started doing workshops on them. And about 20 or so years ago, came across, put together the book, Getting Things Done. And since then, it has been a perpetual business bestseller. So today I'm gonna to share with you some of the key points of the book as it relates to email. But if you're interested in learning more about the full David Allen technique, I advise you go to gettingthingsdone.com or pick up a copy of the book. There's actually some handy workbook versions available and even a version for teens, which my daughter has used to help get herself organized. All right, so here's a little thing you need to do right now as you're watching this video, is go onto Google or your favorite search engine and type in GTD workflow diagram, GTD workflow diagram. And when you look in an image results, <clears throat> you will find a number of different versions of this workflow diagram. Now, this is the one that comes directly out of the Getting Things Done book, but there are several other versions of it that are more colorful or interactive, but this is the basic idea. If you want to get to inbox zero, you need a systematic function, an approach to processing the email, and the workflow diagram provides that. In fact, after you've used the workflow diagram for a while, all this becomes pretty ingrained. It doesn't take that long to do. 
But in order to get to inbox zero, you need to have a step-by-step -step approach to deal with anything that shows up in your world. Because you see, managing your inbox is the key to getting your workflow under control. Now, when I talk about workflow, what I mean is that day-to-day -day stuff, something shows up in your world, you have to identify what it means to you, you have to organize it, put it somewhere where it's meaningful, make sure you're keeping track of it, and then ultimately use it for some actionable purpose. So starting with the inbox is the most important thing. In fact, I want to make sure you all reorient your relationship to your inbox. So I can't see you, but I'm going to ask you all as a matter of you know, education here is to put one hand on your heart and the other hand in the air, just like you're swearing into court and repeat after me. My inbox is not a storage location. It is a processing station. All right, very good. For those of you who did that hands down, you have now committed to a completely different way to looking at your inbox. No longer look at it as a place to store all of your work-related items, things that you're trying to take action on or you're waiting for or you have reference in case you ever need it again. Understanding that your inbox is for one purpose is to help you identify new input. And once you've done that and you've identified what that input means to you, you need to move it out of the inbox. How do you do that? <clears throat> well, basically, when you have time to sit down and go through your inbox, you start from one end and go to the other. <laughs> now, this may sound simple, but what happens is a lot of times people scan through their email looking for the most critical stuff or the most interesting stuff, and they leave the rest of the stuff alone to just continue to pile up and pile up. It's much more functional to work through it step by step with every item. Now, here's the thing. When you pick up an item to look at it, it's glued to your hand or mouse cursor until you make a decision about it. Don't go, eh, I'm not sure what this is, and put it back in the inbox. No. Make an executive decision about what it is and what it means to you. And then you move it out of your inbox to its appropriate spot, and it never goes back. All right? Never return something to the inbox that you've already looked at because you want to remind yourself of something or because you don't want to lose it. I'm going to point out the ways to make sure you never lose something important. So if you have the workflow diagram up, maybe on a different monitor or on your phone, as you go through it, you're going to see it starts with stuff. That stuff is that generic term for anything that shows up in your world, lands in your inbox. So when you sit down to process your inbox, there's two big questions. The first is, what is it? When you pick up an item, you have to decide what it, what it actually is there for. What's it trying to communicate? So let's say your first email you open up says it's an update to the dress code. No more flip-flops allowed at work. OK, that's all it is, an update to the dress code regarding flip-flops. Excellent. Now, here's the second question you have to ask yourself. Is it actionable? There's only two possible answers to this question, yes or no. So what if you look at this memo and you go, ah, I don't even own flip-flops. You know, I don't need to work, do anything with this. Well, you still have a problem. You still have this email sitting there with an update to the dress code. If you leave it in your inbox, you're just going to clutter the space up. So it needs to go somewhere. And if the answer is no, there's only one of three places it can go. It can either go into the trash, get rid of it, and, you know, and you're done. Some things go to a different folder called Someday Maybe, and I'll share a little more about that in a moment. But the other place it can go if there's no action is into your archives or your reference folders, right? You might say, I don't own flip-flops, but I have employees who drink too much tequila on Thursday night. I got to make sure I'm ready when they come in Friday still wearing their flip-flops. It's a Florida thing, so uh, if you're not getting the flip-flop reference. Anyway, the archive or reference is just a place you store stuff in case you need a link. But what if the answer to the question was, yes, there is something I need to do? Well, at that point, you have to decide what is the next action. That is, what's the next physical thing you need to do to move it forward? Is it to call someone to make a connection? Is it to start drafting a memo or writing notes? Is it to get on your computer, open up your spreadsheet or Excel or your photo editor? 
or is it simply to get walk down the hall and talk to someone? Any of these are physical actions, things that you can use to move a project forward. One thing that doesn't move forward as an X action is just thinking about it. You ever had that? Someone says, oh, let me think about it. Oftentimes, when someone says they want to think about it, they're purposely trying to ignore it, hoping it goes away. Not a very professional way to approach your knowledge work here. So now it is permissible to say, you know, I got to sleep on it. I'm going to think about it tomorrow. Great. Make a note about yourself. Your next action is to make a note to come back to it tomorrow. That's perfectly fine. Or next week, because maybe you need a little more time. Maybe you're waiting for something else to happen. You can come back to things, but you need to decide what the next action is going to be. Because ultimately, there's only one of three things you can do with any item in your inbox. So as you move down that chart, you're going to see a few things. And one of them is just to go ahead and do it, right? Maybe this is so important, you just want to clear it off right now. Go ahead and do it, right? Many emails, though, the next action is someone else's. So you need to delegate it. That is, send it over, forward it to the person who should work with it. Maybe it's a question for finance. Maybe it's a question for human resources. Maybe it's a question for IT. Move it to the appropriate person and keep track of it, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. Or finally, you simply defer it. That is, I have to do the next action. I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to park it somewhere that I know where it is. So when I have discretionary time in my day, I can go and attend to it. Again, ultimately, I'm going to make this simpler. There's only one of five things you can do with any email, ultimately. Either it's actionable, you got to do something about it, or it's a waiting for, you got to store it. It could be a someday maybe, a good idea. It could be archives, or it could just be trash. Let's break these down a bit. So action. So in order to make your email inbox functional, you need to create a new folder off to the side that's different from the folders you might use to store your reference items. And you're gonna label it differently. You're gonna call it action and put the at symbol in front of it. What that does is it puts it at the top of your list of folders. Now action is different. It's something where any message that goes into action is not there for the long term. It's only a storage spot for things that you need to move forward at your earliest convenience. All right. So you get something that says, all right, you know, you need to go ahead and finish an agenda for a meeting two weeks from now. Okay, great. You're not prepared to make the agenda now, but you put it in your action folder. And then over the course of your day, you eventually go, oh, yeah, I have some time. Oh, look, there's something to do. It's like creating a little quick menu for yourself. I don't know, you know, if you have a favorite restaurant that you go to, just has a menu that's one sheet. You know, very simple, very easy to pick what you want. As opposed to some of these restaurants, I usually reference Cheesecake Factory, which has a huge, giant menu. You know, if you go through that, you can take 10, 20 minutes to go through that menu. With action, what you're doing is you're taking just the pieces that are useful into there. Now, it's hard to say how much of your inbox is going to be actionable, but the best guess I've seen is about one in 10 items. Have an actionable item that you can't do quickly. So you store it in action. Very good. And you're always asking yourself the question, what is the next action? What is the thing I need to do moving forward? And even if you're not sure, even if you're unclear on what the next action is, just try something. Make your best guess and go from there. Now, there's another folder I'd like you to create. Same thing. Put the little ampersand in front of it. And it's called waiting or waiting for. This is the folder you use to remind yourself that you sent, you delegated an action out, right? Because one of the challenging things is that if you just forward an email along or you're initiating a new email to ask someone to do something, how are you going to keep track to remind yourself that you asked this person to do something? Well, you create a waiting for folder and you either put the message you forwarded into the waiting folder or you put a copy of the email you created into the waiting for folder. And then that way, every few days or at least once a week, you look through the waiting for folder, see who has not got back to you. And this is your opportunity to poke them. 
I like to call it the poke them, poke them file. Go ahead, poke them, say, hey, I sent you this last week. Can I get a response? Because the challenge is if you don't have some place where you keep track of everything you've delegated, it's easy for you to forget and maybe nothing will ever move on it. All right, another folder. You can do this one also with the ad. Someday, maybe, someday, maybe. I call this the good idea storage location. I don't know about you, but I come across good ideas all the time. But I'm not ready to activate those good ideas because I might not have the time, the energy, the permission, funding, you know, the resources, able to move it forward. But I don't want to forget about it. So if I put it in action, I'm going to be frustrating myself because I can't take action on it yet. I'm not ready to go. But if I put it in a folder called Someday Maybe, that gives me permission to park good ideas somewhere. And then I periodically, at least once a week, look through them to see if there's anything useful, anything interesting that I could probably activate. You know, having a folder like this can be helpful when you have those newsletters, right? You go through a newsletter, say you got an ALA newsletter, you saw an article about some activity that this one library is doing that you'd like to duplicate, but you have to wait till the next budget cycle to see if you can get funding for it. Well, that's what the Someday Maybe does, park it there. Then you get the memo, hey, budget season opening, what are your ideas for the next year? Go through and go, oh, this one. And you pull it out and now it's actionable, right? Now you could also put stuff in there and as you go through it, suddenly go, oh, you know, this idea was no good. I'm not interested in it anymore. The passion's gone from it and you're free to discard them at your leisure. Okay, another folder to make yourself is the archive. Now. Uh, the archive, you actually don't have to put an at in front of it. You can if you want, but the archive folder is where you can store all the stuff that you want to keep long term, but has no action associated. This is the little wealth of personal knowledge that you want to keep handy to support you when you do projects or if you have people asking you questions about things that have happened in the past or policy decisions, et cetera you can go into the archive. Now, one thing that a lot of people do when they go into email is they try to duplicate the archiving or reference approach that they do with their paper files. That is, they'll make a lot of different folders for archive, and then they got to sort stuff through them and look through them all. Now, you can do that, but it becomes highly inefficient. In fact, what I recommend is just create one archive folder. That's it, one folder. Because in email, you have these wonderful power searching tools. You can go through and with a quick search, find things that you want. Creating a whole bunch of different subject folders just gets in the way as you have to make a decision each time you file them. And every time you have to make a decision about where something's gonna be filed, that's one opportunity for you to not file it and leave it in your inbox. So if you can make one archive, that's great. Now, for some people, that might be too simplistic in that they might get a higher volume of emails. And one drawback to having one archive folder is search noise. That is, you do a search and you come up with a lot of results that aren't related to what you want. In that case, I would recommend making a few extra archive folders just for the things where you get a lot of email from. So for example, you might make a folder just for stuff from your supervisor, because you probably get a lot of email from them. Or you might have them more subject-wise, like I get emails from this one department or from this one organization. You could do that, but I recommend not making more than 10 of these special folders, 10 to 12 tops. Because once you make too many of them, then you're back in that situation before where, oh my God, where am I gonna put this? If you keep it simple, keep it tight, it makes it easier to sort stuff out of your inbox. So, and of course, the biggest way to clear out your inbox is just to trash, trash, and trash, right? Get rid of everything that has no meaning to you. The more you can delete, not only will it help you clear your inbox faster, but it'll also save you from getting sort of nonsense and noise in your searches of your archive. Now, I do want you to keep in mind, every state has different public records laws. 
So if you're under a public record law, you do need to pay attention to what your retention times are. I'm not gonna go into it because it's every state is different. I know in Florida, there are certain rules. And one thing I know here is that you don't have to save something unless you created the document. So you, just because someone sent you something, you don't have to save it, so you can trash it. There are some exceptions, but just be aware, the more you can trash, the healthier it'll be. So this is just a quick screenshot of my inbox, of my Outlook, sorry, with my inbox. So you can see I have those folders there. Now I actually have another folder, which you can see called at read review. This is where I save newsletters that I just want to hold on to to read later. But if you go down, you'll see I do have about a dozen functional folders, but there's nothing more below what you can see here. I don't want to have to scroll to sort something away. But the action, the read, review, somebody may be waiting for right at the top. And then what you'll notice in the top right corner is my inbox. It says, there are no items to show in this view. This means I have an empty inbox, zero, nothing there. And I'll tell you right now, I've been running on this approach for the last 12 years, and it is the only way, only way to keep sane and keep your email under control. Now, how often should you empty your inbox? Well, uh, GTD suggests every 24 to 48 hours. Now, understand, it's just to empty the inbox. It's not to complete everything that's actionable regarding what's in there. It's just basically moving stuff out, recognizing it and moving stuff out. Now, you might think, how can you possibly do that with the volume? But once you have this system in place, it's very easy. You recognize, oh, this is action. Put it there. Oh, this is waiting for. Put it there. Oh, this is archive. Put it there. This is trash, trash, trash. Oh, this is read review. You can sort through email exceedingly fast. And I'm going to show you in a few moments some ways to deal with a backlog of information. But for now, understand that if you can keep get to this 24-hour mode where you're constantly emptying your inbox, it allows you two benefits. One, you stay on top of everything that's there. There's no surprise lingering because someone sent you an email five days ago and you didn't see it yet. The other thing is it really helps keep the mind clear. When you have an empty inbox and things sorted in their place, it's so much easier to work, so much easier because you know what everything is. It's the difference between opening up a drawer full of junk and not knowing what's in there versus opening up a drawer that has been organized with everything in its place. Much different, much easier to work with. All right. so. Let's talk about having too many emails. Because I'm sure for many of you on the call, you're saying, well, that's great. If I only had 20 or 50, I could do this. But I have thousands. In fact, the record that I've had in doing this work over the past 10 years, someone had over 100,000 emails, <laughs> believe it or not, in their inbox. But I'll tell you right now, just because they had 100,000 emails, did not mean they had 100,000 actionable items. Huge difference. The vast majority of that stuff was reference or trash. It was stuff to get rid of. They just hadn't done it. And it's like that children's bookstore, um, the Shel Silverstein poem, but Sarah Sylvia Cynthia Stout would not take the garbage out, <laughs> right? And if you remember that poem, of course, her garbage ends up going everywhere until when she finally, she ends up meeting a horrible fate in the end. So if you've forgotten that poem, go ahead and relive your childhood. So you don't wanna to get to that point. Let that be a cautionary tale. Let's get your email under control. So the very first tip I'll suggest, when it's time to sort your emails, the great thing about sorting your inbox is you can sort it by different parameters. So I'd like you to choose alphabetically by sender. When you click on the sender column, it'll sort it from you know Abraham down to uh, Zelensky, you know, right that way. By doing this, you quickly group like emails together. You know, for example, maybe you have a whole bunch of 
ALA newsletters that are sitting in your inbox. Well, by sorting from A to Z, suddenly all those newsletters are clumped together now, rather than spread out chronologically over weeks, months, or in some cases, years. Now you can decide what to do with them in bulk, right? You can either you know, highlight them all and just delete them because you know you're not reading them anyway. <laughs> or you can quickly highlight them all and slide them into your read review. Now, at least, they're not cluttering your inbox and they're sitting somewhere where you know this is stuff I can read when I have some time, right? And when you use this approach, if you've got quite a backlog, you might be able to identify chunks of you know, 10, 20, 50, 100, or more all together, and then be able to quickly highlight them and move them out of your way or trash them very fast. Once you've done all that, the next step is to resort by date. So ideally, you've eliminated a lot of the backlog just doing that one A to Z sort. But now you can go and sort them by date. Because when you sort them by date, you can follow something I call the three-month rule. That is, anything older than three months in your inbox probably has no actionable value anymore. If it had any actionable value, that's long since gone. So you can probably take everything over three months, highlight them and either trash them or move them into your reference folder, right? Archive, get them out of the way. Again, now for some people you might go, eh, it's a little too long, you know, I want two months or I want four months, five months. Whatever you like, just find somewhere where you can have a marker where you can say, yep, I'm going to move all this stuff out. All right? Then what you'll have left are just the emails that have or aren't part of some big sender group and are fairly recent. This is the stuff that now you have a much more manageable pile to run through the workflow diagram, right? So just start from the top. What is it? Is it actionable? What's the next action? You know, move through one by one. Now, certainly uh, this is a quicker way to get down to zero, but it's going to take time depending on how much backlog you have. Well, I'll tell you right now, I had a guy who had 80,000 emails and it took him about three, four weeks, but he got through them all. And part of the reason was quite simply that he had 80,000 emails <laughs> was he oversaw this engineering work group and he was copied automatically as workflow was accomplished by his team under him. He was getting automatic update emails. Well, he just wasn't doing anything with those and they just sat in the inbox. So by moving them out, he cleared the, cl he cleared the clutter. <laughs> it's hard to say. So let me share a few final tips because if you've been able to clear all this stuff out, you want to make sure that you don't fall back into the Sarah Sylvia Cynthia Snout situation where you have everything piling up again. Because once you get down to zero, you're going to want to stay down there. You want to stay light and lean. So first thing I recommend in terms of email is turn off any notifications that you get. I'm curious, if you have Outlook, you might have it where it dings you or this little window pops up. <clears throat> I'll tell you right now, if you wanted to sabotage your workflow, there's probably no better way than having email notifications in place. <laughs> because as soon as they pop up, you become like that Pavlovian dog. You begin to <laughs> automatically jump over to see what came in. This is one of the things I recognized early on that these notifications were actually a big distraction. As soon as I turned it off, it eased my mind. In fact, I don't know, this is a funny one, but have you ever heard of like the phantom vibration syndrome? <laughs> I came across this years ago in the news where people would say they feel their phone vibrating in their pocket, but they go to look at it and nothing was there. I actually had this happen myself. So I turned off the vibrate and the notification on my phone as well, and it went away. All right, that's one tip. Another tip is this. 
I'm sure as library types, we enjoy newsletters. In fact, we always, in terms of reading things, our eyes are always bigger than our time, right? We want to have our stack behind us. Well, here's the thing. If you sign up for too many newsletters, they're going to be a big source of clutter for your inbox. So the key is to unsubscribe. Look through the newsletters that you're getting. If you're not reading it, it's not helpful to you. Unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Get off. Keep only the ones that are of interest to you. Otherwise, you're just going to have this stack of stuff. So there's two other things around newsletters. First of all, most newsletters you can scan very quickly. And if there's any good content, okay, move it to action, move it to read review, somewhere where you're going to look at it later. If you don't see anything useful, delete it. You know, don't be like, oh, let me see, let me read through it at leisure. No, scan it first, see if anything interests, delete it, or move it somewhere where you can read it later. The other thing about newsletters as well is that your newsletters can easily take up a lot of your time reading and trying to sort through in the inbox. So one thing you can do in an environment such as Outlook, which is very programmable, you can create different rules. If there are newsletters that you're getting that you don't want to be bothered with originally, but you might want to see later, you can set up a little rule that sends that newsletter straight to your read review folder, bypasses your inbox and just sits in the read review. That way, it's not cluttering up where you're doing your work, but you know you've got it there for later when it's you know Friday afternoon or the weekend and you wanna just kind of go through some professional reading, it's already stashed away and you can look at it at your leisure. All right, final thing I'll suggest and perhaps the most useful thing, in fact, it's right there on the workflow diagram. Some of you might've been upset that I missed it, but I wasn't missing it. I was saving this lovely little tip for towards the end. It's the two minute rule. And this is one of the key things that GTD shares that David Allen, the founder of GTD has said, the people who adopt this rule get a huge bang for their buck. They really up their productivity game. So here's the rule, very simple. When you're clearing out your inbox, if you identify something actionable and you can accomplish that action in under two minutes, do it right away. Don't save the email for later. Don't move it over to your action. Don't do something else with it. Do it right away if it's under two minutes. This accomplishes two things. One, it allows you to you get something done, right? You don't have to go through an intermediary step. You get a quick win. And then when you're done, you can trash the email or move it to your reference. Also, it gives a, a win. It gives you a sense of accomplishment, a sense of moving forward, right? Also, the reason why David Allen came to about the two minutes as the two minute rule is this. If you look at something and you realize it's actionable and you kind of know what your next action is, if you go ahead and store it in your action folder, it might take you longer than two minutes the next time to open it up, figure out and go, oh, okay, this is what I had to do may actually take longer. That's why two minutes he came up with this whole sweet spot. You open it up, you identify it, you do it. In fact, it's kind of related to the idea of one touch in your email. That is, when you look at something, you open it, you decide what you're going to do with it, and you do it right away. Now, GTD is not specifically a one-touch approach. As you can tell, you might be moving it to action and then pulling it up later. But you definitely want one touch with what you're processing in the inbox. That is, you look at it, you see what it means, and you move it away. Remember, I said it'd be glued to your hand or mouse cursor until you make a decision about it. So the two-minute rule is extremely helpful to clear out your inbox okay, and give you a sense of accomplishment along the way. In fact, I, I referenced this earlier, and this is where I got it from. There's a behavioral psychologist named Day, Dan Ariely. And on his website, he shared some informal research that he did with his readership. And what he found was that really only about one every 10 emails was super important. In fact, so important he'd want to be interrupted by it. In fact, the vast majority of them weren't really that important. So try not to obsess over your email. Don't, don't be worried that you're going to miss something. Because a lot of email is, quite frankly, not important. 
that is why having this simple systematic approach allows you to move through it very quickly so that you can get your inbox down to zero, feel under control, feel like you can now move forward. Because here's a different, here's one other thought around it. It's if you leave stuff sitting in your inbox, you start to become subject to the latest and loudest problem. The latest and loudest problem is basically the idea is that whatever's in your face, whatever seems most, it becomes most important. And that's what you deal with. But in reality, it might not be that important. It might not be that useful to try and accomplish. That's why moving stuff over to an action folder gives you some time to come back and reflect on it. Because once you've got a whole bunch of stuff in there, you now have the ability to look at it and go, okay, um, you know, this one's actually more important than that. I'm going to do this one, right? You can use that executive discretion that knowledge workers should carry with them to be able to move something forward effectively. So clearing out your inbox is extremely important, helps you become far more productive. In fact, for me, I'm gonna close out our session here by talking about the strategic value of clear space. And this is something David Allen mentions quite a bit in his talks. It's simply the idea that, look, when you have clear space around you, it's easier to think, it's you're more relaxed because having the clear space lets your mind focus on what's important. Right. I'm sure all of you have the experience of walking into someone's office that's completely full of clutter. <laughs> uh, just observe if you walk into that type of office, there's sometimes a tension there. It's like a concern, like, ooh, there's all the stuff around. What does it mean? What is it going on with all? In fact, if you're one of those people who has piles on your desk or an overflowing inbox, part of your mind when it gets to work, your mind has to do one of two things to handle the situation. Either it has to unconsciously scan through everything to make sure you didn't miss something important, or it has to actively block all the clutter out so you can focus on what you want to work on. Neither way is helpful and it's draining over time. But when you have clear space around you, both electronically and physically, it allows the mind to relax so you can access deeper thoughts, so you can actually make executive decisions on what's most important to do. I liken this to the idea of you know, cooking. Just say you are a gore, aspiring gourmet chef and you want to make a wonderful meal for some friends you're inviting over on a Saturday night. Well, imagine you walk into your kitchen and first scenario, there's stuff all over the counter, dirty dishes in the sink, rotten food in the fridge, spice racks disorganized. You don't know where a clean dish towel is. How excited at that point are you going to be to make that gourmet dinner? Eh, you might decide to buy something out and think it at that point, right? But imagine a different scenario. You walk into your kitchen, clear counters, no dirty dishes in sight. They've either been cleaned or they're in the dishwasher ready to go. All the food in your fridge is fresh and freshly bought and nicely made. Your spice rack's organized. You got the clean dish towels at hand, ready to go. Would that be a more conducive environment to make a gourmet dinner? I would expect so. So why don't you take that attitude to your workplace? Consider yourself the, a gourmet of librarianship, <laughs> of workflow, of executive function, of management. Come into it with that understanding that if I keep my surroundings, I'll be more effective, more efficient. I won't have to take work home on the weekends or in evenings. I can focus on the things that I want to do outside of work, knowing that whatever's left will be there. In fact, here's the thing. I know many of you like to take vacations, right? But you also dread taking a vacation because you fear coming back, you'll just have a whole bunch of stuff waiting for you. Well, for me, when I take vacations, I'm not too worried about that. You know, if I want, I can spend a couple minutes sorting my email when I have quiet time on my vacation. Just sort it out, do it. And I do, unfortunately, I have to admit, I do look at my email a bit on vacation, mostly because I need to keep track in case there's an emergency that I might need to pop in and help out with. But by and large, because I have this system, I can sort that out. And even if I didn't touch it, just say I was on a cruise ship, there was no Wi-Fi, no nothing. And I came back to a thousand emails sitting in my inbox. I'll tell you right now, this systematic approach 
I could clear that out in the morning and be back to where I was supposed to be. It's a much more powerful space to work from and one that I invite you to explore and try. So if you'd like some additional information, I'm going to give you two sources. One is my blog, theefficientlibrarian.com. Go to my website. You'll find articles I've written, uh, both for publications and that are also just on my site, my blog posts that I do once a week, also links to other workshops and activities and seminars that I'm doing, both locally here in Florida and in other places across the country. And it's also an opportunity for you to reach out to me if you want. Also, of course, I recommend you go back to gettingthingsdone.com. I recommended this at the top of the show, but it's definitely your one-stop stop, one -stop spot for GTD-related items. And of course, the book has been in, in print as a bestseller for over 20 years, so you can definitely find a copy for yourself. Print, electronic, audiobook, all sorts of different versions. So with that, I'm going to conclude. I want to thank you all for your time and attention, attention at this session. And at this point, I am on the Whova app. I'm there in the room. So this is just a recording. And if you have questions and such, I'm ready to interact with you. But to close out this recording, I want to thank you for your time and attention and have a wonderful day. Doug, that was wonderful. And I, I do have to tell you, I took the oath. I promise to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and can you come back and teach me how to handle the photos on my phone? Because they're totally out of control as well. <laughs> um, well, you know, photos are kind of a similar thing, you know? I mean, actually, in a lot of cases with photos, mostly it's about keeping track of the ones that are really important to you, right? So, you know, using that favorite function to keep track of the ones you really want to see. But you can still do the same thing, create some folders. I mean, the good thing about most of these things is they sort by date and time and all that. And usually by photos, you kind of remember, it's more about when you took the photo as opposed to the content. So a lot of different ways. So, all right. Well, thank you for being here today. And thank you everyone for attending this session. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to the speaker or to the conference host in the Huba app. An evaluation is provided for the conference session. And we welcome your feedback about the session and the conference in general. Thanks, everybody, for making the 2023 Southeastern Collaborative Conference successful. See you next year. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Have a great day.